I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it's time for the latest in National Park news. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is our monthly National Park news episode. It's sort of a compendium to our America's National Parks podcast. If you haven't checked it out, it's available on any podcast app, and we tell all kinds of stories from the National Parks as well as bringing you the latest news. On Thursday, November 9th, the National Park Service announced that Arches, Glacier, and Rocky Mountain National Parks will bring back their pilot entry reservation systems for 2024, rather than implementing a more permanent timed entry plan that is coming in the future for sure. So you will have to make reservations at these popular parks in order to visit for the most part, but the way it all works is different depending on the park and it could change over the course of the year. But beginning on April 1st, Arches National Park will require visitors to have a timed entry permit, and you can begin booking those reservations as soon as January 2nd. Glacier National Park will require reservations beginning on May 24th for the western side of Going to the Sun Road and North Fork, and another on July 1st for Many Glacier. At Glacier, unlike last year, 2024 reservations will only be good for one day due to data that showed that only 2% of participants entered the park during all three days, their permit was good for 2023. Rocky Mountain National Park will bring back its timed entry system beginning on May 24th as well. And the same as in 2023, visitors will be able to get a permit for either the entire park or everything excluding the popular Bear Lake Corridor. So that second permit is going to be a bit more available. If you don't land a permit or want some more spontaneity in your travels, in most cases, you can enter these parks early, like before 7 a.m. or late in the afternoon, usually after 4 p.m. They usually hold some reservations back until a few days beforehand, so if you aren't able to snag one when those reservations open, you might have another chance. Reservations for all parks that have reservations, and there are a few more, for the 2024 season can be made on recreation.gov. The National Park Service has announced a seven-year initiative to focus efforts on hiring more women in law enforcement positions across the country, joining hundreds of other law enforcement agencies and committing to increase female representation in our law enforcement workforce by signing on to the 30 by 30 pledge, an initiative to advance the representation and experiences of women in police agencies across the U.S., bringing their levels up to 30% by 2023. The Department of the Interior released a report from the Law Enforcement Task Force recommending improvements to Bureau law enforcement organizations. And in that report, the task force recommends agencies implement programs and initiatives to recruit and retain a diverse workforce. Women currently only represent 16% of the entire NPS law enforcement workforce. With the pledge, the NPS is committing to almost doubling the number of female law enforcement officers. Back in 2021, the Park Service piloted a centralized hiring program designed to reduce those barriers to entry. After two years of centralized hiring, the Park Service is adapting its recruitment processes to permanently implement the strategy. Of the 100 new law enforcement rangers hired in fiscal year 2023, about 20% were women and 25% were non-white. Yellowstone National Park has announced that a mule deer buck inside the park's borders has tested positive for chronic wasting disease. It's the first positive for the park, even though the disease is prevailing in the surrounding areas. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department tested the carcass of a radio collared mule deer that died in the southeastern section of the park near Yellowstone Lake. CWD causes physiological and behavioral changes in infected animals, it ultimately leads to their emaciation and death. It's a transmissible neurological disease similar to mad cow. There's no effective way to eradicate chronic wasting disease once it's been established. CWD is most common in whitetail and mule deer, but it's also been detected in elk and moose elsewhere in the country. This episode is sponsored by the Park Wolf app. Ever found yourself in the heart of a national park surrounded by beauty, but unsure where to go or what to see? That's where Park Wolf comes in. Park Wolf is the ultimate app for exploring national parks. As you drive, the GPS shows you what's coming up on the road, and an audio guide will fill you in on what's there so you can decide if it's worth a stop for you or not. Gas running low, looking for a bite to eat or a bathroom break? Park Wolf's got you covered. It keeps track of the nearest gas station, restrooms, food, and pullover areas. And the best part, it works without an internet connection. And if you're a wildlife enthusiast, you'll love Park Wolf's 
wildlife maps and sighting notifications. So before you set off on your next national park adventure, download the ParkWolf app for your iPhone from the App Store. It's your ultimate guide to national parks. Humpback whale season was winding down in Icy Strait at Glacier Bay National Park back in October when a whale was found anchored to the seafloor and tangled by a 300 pound crab net with 450 feet of heavy duty line. It turned out the whale had been entangled for at least three days. A rescue effort was authorized by NOAA's Alaska Large Whale Entanglement Response Team, but gale force winds were forecast for later in the week and daylight hours were short. And then a perfect brief weather opening came with flat calm seas and sunny skies. The whale was making seven to nine minute dives and was at the surface for only about 30 seconds. The footage from a drone soon revealed why. The whale had a loop of line through its mouth that led to a large heavy glob of tangled lines at its tail. In effect, the whale was hogtied. Its body bent sharply to the side as it swam in a predictable clockwise circle each time it came up. The team worked with the whale all day until daylight was disappearing using specialized tools to remove some of the gear while remaining at a distance from the whale. The whale was freed, and after the team made the last cut, it disappeared which the team took as a good sign that it was no longer hampered by the lines and could rapidly swim away. It was a tremendous effort that involved lots of coordination quickly, including flying in multiple experts to help disentangle the stuck whale. On November 1st, Lyndon B. Johnson National Historical Park welcomed National Park Service leaders and the Johnson family to celebrate the groundbreaking for the Texas White House Rehabilitation Project, funded by the Great American Outdoors Act. After being closed to the public since 2018 due to structural and mold issues, rehabilitation work at the Texas White House will now begin this January. In the five years since its closure, Lyndon B. Johnson National Historical Park has coordinated numerous environmental and structural investigations, mold remediation, conservation of historical artifacts, a year and a half long design process, and then a value analysis that confirmed the optimal solutions for rehabilitation. The complex is anticipated to reopen to the public in late 2025. You can still go there and tour. You just can't go in the house. They have a lot going on there. It's still worth a visit. The construction will complete in 2025 and the buildings can then be restaged. They're also updating the interpretive experience in the hangar and a lot of other stuff that's going to be incorporated well into the future. After a year full of challenges, Olympic National Park has announced that the Hurricane Ridge Road and Recreation Area will open for the winter season on the day after Thanksgiving. During the closure, work crews have tackled multiple construction projects. A restroom trailer and visitor contact station have been installed and connected to utilities. By the end of the closure, crews will have completed utility trenching and the demolition and removal of the Hurricane Ridge Day Lodge debris. Back on May 7th at 4.30 p.m., a law enforcement ranger on patrol reported that the Hurricane Ridge Day Lodge was fully engulfed in flames. It was completely gone by the time fire crews even arrived. In the wintertime, the lodge had rented out snowshoes and skis. That stuff's not going to be available, but weather permitting Hurricane Ridge Road is scheduled to be open on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays through March 31st, 2024. Visitors should be prepared to use their vehicles as a warming area and pack extra food, water, dry clothing and blankets or sleeping bags. There'll be no indoor warming area. There's no food service, no potable water or gear rentals at all. On the days that it's open, Hurricane Ridge Road will open at 9 a.m. Weather permitting, the road will be closed to uphill traffic at four o'clock and vehicles must exit the heart of the hills entrance station by 5 p.m. All vehicles, including those with four wheel drive will be required to carry tire chains. Three-year-old Journey Castillo has achieved the feat of visiting all 63 U.S. national parks, likely becoming the youngest person in history to do so. Okay, well, she didn't actually do much, but her parents did. Journey was born in late 2020 during the heart of the COVID-19 pandemic to parents Eric and Valerie Castillo, who are avid hikers, and the family's adventure began as a pandemic getaway, but soon turned into a passion for visiting all the national parks. The Castillos hailed from San Antonio, Texas, starting Journey's travels shortly after her birth in 2020. Their first trip was to Pikes Peak and Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado. That marked the beginning of what would become a three-year adventure spanning the entirety of the U.S. The Castillos are well aware that Journey probably won't remember much of anything of her trips, but wanted to instill in their young child a love for the outdoors and for adventure and plan to revisit all the parks with her when she's older. 
That's it for this month's National Park News Roundup. Thanks so much for being here. Again, make sure to check out our America's National Parks podcast. You can find it on any podcast app, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. As always, hit the like button if you got something out of this video. Subscribe for more like this, and we'll see you on the next one. Oh,